after an off-season that seemed to last forever, GP3 finally returns. Welcome to the opening round of the 2016 GP3 season. It's a series that seems perfectly poised. A heap of talented young drivers, a brand new team which has already made an impact, and most excitingly of all, a beautiful Dallara built GP316 for the series. I'm your commentator, Alex Jakes. Good afternoon to everyone watching at home. We are looking at the big question hanging over this race at the moment. Is it going to rain? It's as simple as that. Is it going to rain? It looks like it's going to rain. It's been on the GP2 team's monitors at the end of the last race. We've been watching it ominously rolling in from the hills. This is the direction the rain has come from. But let's focus on the remarkable qualifying session we had this morning as JQ starred and he was absolutely phenomenal. Storming to a maiden pole position on debut with a fantastic lap especially a phenomenal final sector. And uh, saw him edge his teammate, Kevin York, and amazingly meant that the Dams team lock out the front row at the very first attempt. Sensational performance for them so far. The big question is, can they seal the win and make it a truly magical first weekend in the series? The other five teams will be very keen indeed to stop that from happening. As we look at the second place man, Kevin York, on the front row. The man who was in the mix for the Formula Renault Euro Cup last year on the front row for his debut in GP2. And we still have cars heading to the grid. Here is the grid for the first race of the year. Jake Hughes is at the front of the field, then we have Jorg, Leclerc, Fukuzumi, Dennis, Tunjo, Fuoco returning, moving to Trident, then Albon, Boshong, Jack Aitken, then we have De Vries, Calderon, Gonda, Stotthorst, Mativos Esikan, Santino Ferrucci in the third of the Dams cars, had the pace to join his teammates, he was fastest in the first sector of all, but he wasn't able to carry the pace through the second two. Then it's Tereshenko, Nandi, Harry, Janos, Stuvig, Rag Hunathan, and Alex Palau, who had technical trouble. He is 23rd. In the pit lane will be Giuliano Alessi. There he is, right on cue. His first race in the series, and that penalty is for failing to stop for the official weight check. Very easy to do. As we look at the steering wheel of Charles Leclerc, many people's pre-season favourite, starting from the second row of the grid. Seems pretty relaxed, seems pretty calm. He was testing a Ferrari this time last week. Described that experience as a dream come true, a first taste of Formula One machinery, and it was the 2014 Ferrari. Really interesting situation this weekend. We've had practice sort of washed out. As we look at Nairei Fukuzumi on the second row in fourth place, a man who has starred in pre-season testing. So we saw a combination, and there are the tyres he might need if the weather comes any closer than it already is. We saw him start in pre-season testing, but what's really interesting from the qualifying session is that they were still learning despite all that pre-season running. <laughs> Slightly heavier than the, the old car as Dams push Hughes back in his grid slot. Speaking to his engineer, just going through the final stages as the grid begins to clear. But because practice was washed out, qualifying, they were having to learn about the car still in this specific temperature. Track temperature is 32 degrees. When they were testing here uh, a month ago, almost half that. And that's absolutely crucial because this is the racetrack where you really do need the mechanical grip from the tyres. Because think of the, if you think of the flowing circuit, you have turns one, two, three and four that you need supreme grip. But the main overtaking positions down into turn 10 and down into turn one are 
And look at this, we've got still got mechanics on the grid with the green light, and that was basically half the grid. We've got an ART there. Oh, there could be multiple penalties there for failing. But that's going to be, that is going to change the complexion of the race before we have even started, because there were at least five mechanics still on the grid at the 15 second warning. Now we have a green light, so slightly chaotic scenes as we get the 2016 GP3 season on its way on the formation lap. Here, yeah, it's a brand new era for the sport. The third generation car, the Lara built with a custom made Mechachrome 3.4 litre engine capable of 400 horsepower. All the teams are thinking about it at the moment, warming tyres and brakes and looking to the sky. When is the weather going to come in? Remember, normally in a feature race, we would not be seeing a pit stop in GP3. It would be a lights to flag affair. It would all be about tyre management. And, and we are, might be about to see something completely different. As we focus on Antonio Fuoco, one of the cars carrying an onboard camera, so no doubt we'll be able to get in the thick of it with him. He will be feeling the pressure off the start. So many times he was involved in collisions last year. He's got to avoid that if he's going to live up to the potential he undoubtedly has. And you can see how dark it is in the distance. It's what we've seen in the last few days. It's what we saw yesterday in free practice. And if it does rain, remember, uh, well, maybe you weren't with us for free practice. So let me clarify what happened. No one really went out, no one really tested the wet tyres, apart from Parry and Tereshenko. As we look at Lacey in the pit lane, wearing his father's crash helmet design. Amazing to see that iconic design back in racing at this level. But that could be a real advantage to Parry, who starts this race way down in 19th after getting a penalty for blocking. Stewart's decided he'd impeded another driver, and it's closing in from all corners of the racetrack. We have 15 rookies in this season. Here's one of them, Charles Leclerc. So impressive last year in European Formula 3. Took four wins at venues, three of which are at venues that we're going to visit this year at Silverstone, Hockenheim, and Spa. But for the moment, we're focusing on Jake Hughes, the man born in Birmingham, a proud Brummie. Car number 27 as Fuoco wrestles the car, lining up the rear tyres. We saw, we saw a car spin in Belgium. Was it Italy? I think it was Italy, actually. A car spin around doing that too vociferously. Alex Palau was so angry he was unapproachable in the paddock earlier on he was furious that he didn't get a chance to shine on home soil in qualifying but should the rain come he knows this place very well indeed and he is well placed we ride on board him on board with him the last car to take his position off up on the grid and now it's he's positioned his car to avoid the one in front so he's expecting to clear Rag Hunathan in front of him, and now here come the lights. It's a new era for GP3 with the new car in 2016. We're underway in Barcelona with a great start for the Pulse in a Hughes and a terrific one. We've got a store at the back. That's Jack Aiken. They've all managed to get round him. Thank goodness for that. But meanwhile, we've got a car on the grass. Left and right, that was Dennis, but into the lead goes Charles Leclerc past Hughes on the inside, and that's going to be very close to contact with Fukuzumi in the background there. Oh, my word, that was very close indeed, but he's just about survived. Fuoco and Dennis trading round there. We've got Tunjo in the mix, but it's Charles Leclerc who manages to get himself up in the order, up into the lead, and down the inside from the, uh, is going the trident of Fuoco, going past the man who started on the front row. Kevin York heading back. He started second, he's now down to fifth, and it's all so very tight at the moment. Got to be careful not to lose a wing or even a wheel in the opening lap of the GP3 season. Very close, as down the inside, the Karayan trying to get past Gonda, and he's up, he's up a position. So that's Essekan in the Karayan that's got past, and the rookie's not having the easiest time. This is where you will see 
as we see Leclerc's advantage coming under scrutiny. Still sorting it out at the back of the field. Palau trying to get past his fifth car on this first lap. Remember, he started last, and Stein Sothorst, his opening race of the season, will only go to one lap. Back to the action coming through the final sector of this racetrack then. And there's not much at the front between Leclerc, Hughes, Fukuzumi, York, who has lost the position to Froco Let's. Oh, we've got Dennis off the road at the top of the screen. And another car off the road fighting to keep it on the tarmac. And there will be gravel all over the road as Jake Hughes tries to wrestle back for the lead. And Dennis has cost himself a position there as up goes Alex Alvin. He is up into sixth position, down to seventh goes Dennis, who is trying to push, trying to get himself further up the order and only send himself off the road. It gives a great opportunity to Oscar Tunjo, who is right underneath the Arden driver at this stage of the race and absolutely frenetic at the moment. And then behind that, a terrific start from Parry, who has got himself up to 12th. And meanwhile, Hughes, who lost the lead well before the first turn, he was simply out dragged. And the better reaction time for Charles Leclerc but Hughes is all over the back of the ART on lap two with the weather closing in. And it's super dramatic stuff at the start of the GP3 season. Exactly what we expected. You can see the terrific exit that Hughes is getting. No DRS, of course, in GP3. They have to do it the old fashioned way. But they also, these two need to be aware of the tire management. They can't go racing off into a winner takes all argy bargy battle because they could drop off a cliff last year. We saw the safety car out for four laps and the tires still fell off a cliff. Something for the rookies to consider. Fuoco is well placed in fourth position. The aerodynamics of this car, Dallara say, have been optimized for overtaking. Sometimes you would see the start being crucial. It has been in the past. Last year, Ocon overtook Luca Giotto and stayed there. No moves being made into turn one at the moment. Leclerc, Hughes, Fukuzumi, Fuoco, Jorg, Alban, Dennis, Tunjo, De Vries, and then Boshong, Esakan, and Parry are the battle we're looking at at the moment. The three Korean GP cars in their new livery for 2016. Really stylish. Minimalistic effort. And they're racing all the way down the hill as Calderon thinking about a move. Tatiana Calderon, the only female driver in the field. She's pressuring Gonda as we go back to the start. Watch the car in third position on the right-hand side of your picture. He's about to launch through. Oh, we're focusing on Aiken. This is how we lost the British driver. The man that was on provisional pole and then got blocked earlier in the session. A straight stall off the line, not the way at all. And then Stein Stotthorst struggling to get away as well. Jake Dennis was edged off the road. That's why he lost track position to Fuoco. You see at the front, Charles Leclerc already had the lead. And then I thought Jorg was going to cream into the side of Fukuzumi. No such problem in the end on board with the man who's currently in the lead of this race by six tenths of a second. And here's how he got there. Immediately, Hughes knows that he needs to go on the defensive. And so Leclerc jinking to the inside and he's already into the lead. It's such a long run down to turn one. He was even, even able to go defensive on board with Antonio Fuoco in the Trident. Getting rid of a tear. How casual was that? You've got Carl spitting up dust in front of you and he's getting rid of a tear off at the start. Absolutely bizarre to see that. As we saw Tunjo going into turn one too hot. Fukuzumi just about avoiding contact with York, who is the driver in front in the navy and yellow dams car. And this was the first two, so this is going to be Jake Dennis heading off the road, is it? Oh, yes, it is in a major way. And he was so lucky that he didn't get spat into the barrier on the inside. And then also being followed through by Konstantin Tereshenko. So there's Dennis. And then watch at the top of your picture now as Tereshenko clean a long way off the road with a huge snap of oversteer. 
And that is how we got ourselves into the situation we currently are in. Leclerc from Hughes, from Fukuzumi, from Foco, from York, your top five. We're focusing on car number four running in ninth place. That's Nick De Vries, the ART McLaren Jr. So many of the drivers in this field are backed by Formula One development programs, including the man that we've lost from this race, Jack Aiken, who has got going again, albeit down in 21st. So he did manage to get himself back in the race. Stein Stotthorst, who we saw very slow indeed, off the line, has retired. He is the only retirement from the field of 24. Of course, the major difference this year is that the teams can field up to four drivers if they wish. And it's going very well indeed for ART with four drivers at the right end of the field at the moment. The gap is 1.3, so the clerk has managed to break the attention of Hughes, who has dropped back a tiny amount. Ferrari with a huge interest in this series with a Lacey, Leclerc, and Antonio Fuoco. Part of their junior driver program is Oscar Tunjo, who looks to have the edge at the moment over Jake Dennis. There they are. Dennis in the red and white Arden. Tunjo moving. He competed in the first few races last year with Trident, moving to the Genza car, and he's all over the back of the man who was so impressive. And here we go, battling for position then. York all over the road, trying to make it work. Defending from Albon. Albon went down the inside, but York has got the position back. Albon knocking on the door in a major way as we go back to Tuncho and Dennis. And on first evidence, it does appear that the cars are following each other with greater ease. So this was... Albon throwing it down the inside, just like Nato did a few moments ago. But the tie driver was unable to slow it down on the apex. Jorg kept calm and retook the position. The battle for fifth will continue between those two, but a bold move and great to see moves being attempted this early in the race. Remember, the driver's still having to be aware of the tyre life. Tunjo with a much better exit of turn two, gaining all the time through turn three. How close can he get? It's a pressure corner, this one. We've seen cars off, on the it, off in the gravel so many times this weekend, including the move that finished the GP2 race a few moments ago, with Giovinazzi spinning round. Raffaele Marcello, six laps gone. Your leader is still Charles Leclerc. Jake Hughes losing a tenth in the opening sector of this lap. For Kazumi, looking comfortable. 2.4 seconds off the lead, but Fuoco hanging in there. Knows he's got to be more consistent this year. A lot of pressure as a returning driver. There aren't many of them in the series. Jorg trying to repel Albon behind him. And Tunjo getting ever closer to Jake Dennis, who has been off the road. Looked to be in the mix for pole position. And you see that Albon seemingly with a much greater sense of confidence in his ART at the moment. He's hassling York, who started from the front row and doesn't want to sink any lower than fifth place. On to the seventh lap we go. Leclerc increasing the advantage to Hughes, but remember, tyre management is so crucial. They would have done so many laps in testing, but you don't know until you get to this racetrack, particularly with the circuit to Catalonia's temperature sensitivity for tyres, how the new machinery is going to react. And York will be continuing to drive on his mirrors, as will Dennis. We're looking at the blue Genza of Oscar Tunjo at the top of your picture, coming into view right now. Car number 26. And then behind him, he's got De Vries, he's got Boschong, and he's got Esikan, the Russian who made such a wonderful debut. But he found out the price of not looking after the tyres rose from the back of the field and then saw the tyre life in the Bahrain race at the end of 2015 just totally fall away from him. Dennis doing a good job under the pressure of racing 
one of only two race winners in the field. Charlotte Clerk trying to do something about that at the front, but it's been described by many pundits, commentators, journalists, fans as the strongest ever GP3 field. Jake Dennis was saying there are going to be terrific drivers out of the points. Now let's look at 10th, 11th and 12th. Well, Matt Parry certainly proved that he is a terrific driver last year with three podiums and a storming recovery drive in that Bahrain race. The first visit to Bahrain for GP3. So Leclerc looking very comfortable indeed. If anything, Hughes is now coming into the clutches of the second ART on the road in the battle for the final place on the podium. The weather continuing to roll in, by the way. No spots of rain on any of the onboard shots at the moment. Here's Parry trying to get his teammates out of the way, trying to make up for a wretched qualifying session. He'll be hoping for rain as well because he had a lot of data running all the way through that practice session. And he's getting ever closer to his teammate as they come out of three. Slightly wider line for Essekan, the Korean trio that are headed by Ralph Boschong, who's moved from Jenza to Korean. Thinks he's got a better chance of winning races with this team. And you can see Essekan beginning to use more of the racetrack. What state are his tyres in? Pirelli went down a different road. The front tyres used to be the ones that you had to look after. Then the emphasis was switched at the end of 2014 for rear degradation, and that's what you have to lose once they disappear off the cliff, they stay off the cliff. And so the drivers may be driving at 90% at this stage of the race. Still, unbelievably, in close quarter formation, there's only 20 seconds covering the top 18 considering that this is a track where you do really get field spread. The car's able to follow, but not yet seeing dramatic. And we see Stein Stotthorst, who is listed as retired on the monitor, but they're going to try and get it restarted, the Campos team, and they're going to try and get him back out there in the mix to try and learn what he can treat it as a test session in and learn what he can with this sort of temperature. So Hughes has managed to stabilize the gap, taking a tenth out of the man who was in front of him, then Fuoco in the second group, Jorg, then Albon, Dennis, and Oscar Tunjo, the next group of cars all fighting over fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. As you can see, displayed with a graphic on your screen, as we inch ever closer to halfway and the field, like we saw in GP2 a few moments ago, fairly static. But remember what we saw last year, the last few laps of the race, the last five laps of the race, everything changed. Drivers that look after their tyres will be rewarded and Tunjo's look in very good condition. They all look in good condition at the moment. Tunjo getting really close to the back of Dennis breaking down into the first turn. You can see there's nothing between the gaps across the field, basically no larger than a second between any car uh, from sixth all the way down to 14th. So it's one lockup, it's one mistake, it's the constant pressure of proving that you belong at this level for all the rookies. Giuliano Alessi, who had to start from the pit lane, is still at the back of the screen that I'm looking at in 23rd position. He just needs to learn as much as possible. Albon getting really close now to York. Is he going to throw it down the inside? Oh, he thought about it, but then decided to back out. Every time you do that, of course, you are losing momentum all the way up the hill. Tunjo has seemingly been the same distance away from Jake Dennis's gearbox for about the last five laps, not really making any impression. The clerk seemingly with it all in control. These are the two main battles then, headed by Alex Alvin in sixth, the tie driver trying to get past York for fifth, and Dennis defending seventh from Oscar Tunjo, who won the Austrian sprint race from ninth on the grid in what 
turned out to be one of his last appearances in GP3 in 2015. Great to have him back. So cars being worked on after the 15 second signal will be investigated after the race. And I think they're probably taking that approach because there were so many of them. There, there would be such, um, although that, that really could completely change the order. And you don't often see investigations that don't lead to penalties. It's worth bearing that in mind. But there were at least five mechanics still on the grid at the 15 second signal. The 15 second signal is there to make sure cars aren't starting the formation lap with bodies on the racetrack it's a safety measure and it has to be adhered to to go racing safely so back to the action back to Oscar Tunjo's never-ending attempt to get past Jake Dennis who is driving beautifully not with the balance that he would want Dennis was saying it's so important to score points so important to be consistent this year a lot of people listing the man in the lead as the clear favorite but there is some serious talent out there and maybe a decision to be made. We saw, crucially, in the lead for the GP2 race less than an hour ago when Norman Natto threw his nose down the inside. Gasly had a decision to make. Was he going to have an accident and see if he survived it or was he going to open the door and play the long game in the battle for the championship? It's something that maybe Dennis is going to have to consider in a few laps' time. Certainly in the middle sector, Tunjo really consistent lap after lap and always a couple of tenths faster than Dennis, who now rounds turn number nine. Nowhere near the red curve that we saw them pushing in qualifying. And that's the 90% driving within themselves that I was speaking about a moment ago. We're at half distance of the opening feature race for the 2016 GP3 series. And you see that Tunjo, marginal gains. He needs more like two tenths of a second a lap. He's not got it at the moment, so in formation, they stay for another lap. Dennis, with that excursion earlier in the race, hasn't looked like making any other mistakes. Remember, we lost his teammate, Aitken, who we actually see at the top of the picture here. And that's Akash Nandi with a huge lock-up into Turn 10. And that is going to make the remaining laps of his race extremely challenging indeed. Akash Nandi, the first Malaysian driver to race in GP3, welcoming him to the grid this weekend. But that was a major lock-up. And, of course, the tyre now becomes like a 50-pence piece. And he'll be getting vibrations towards the end of the opening race of his GP3 career. Tatiana Calderon really pressuring Gonda there down into turn number five. Six is a bit of a non-corner and they have finally decided that that is that for Stein Stotthorst. The slow getaway, not the way he would have wanted to start his season, but great effort by Campos to try and get him back out onto the racetrack. Sadly, that effort has been unsuccessful. Tunjo very close, then to freeze, and then Parry, the man in your picture at the back of the Korean train of cars led by Ralph Boschong. And it's been this way since lap two now. You can see why Alex Alban took that dive down the inside of York. He knew that you had to get the racing done, the overtaking done in the early part of the race before we went into the tire management phase not getting too far away from when the tires if they're going to fall off the cliff will fall off the cliff and this new car doesn't feature the winglets on the end plates of the front wing that we used to see get scattered in the first lap and all sorts of overtaking moves and still the weather looks ominous but fails to arrive if it does come it would completely change the complexion of this race remember everyone if it, if it did rain it would just be absolute chaos because you've got four car teams and the and the teams of course never used to pitting cars so it really would be a sight to see if the rain does tumble out of the sky you'd have quite a train at ART at Trident and at Korion where three of the cars are in very close quarters indeed 
as they battle through turn seven once again. Leclerc has stopped pulling away at the front. The gap is 2.2 seconds. And Hughes taking a little bit of time out of him in the first sector. Both posted level times in the second sector. So does Hughes have anything to come back at the Monagas driver in the lead of this race? The man from Monaco, sadly for him, he won't be racing at home this year. GP3 getting the season started. Then there's a test of the new car still working out, still fine tuning it before the Austrian race. GP2 in that time will go to Monaco and Azerbaijan. We see that Jorg still has his mirrors absolutely full of Albon, who must be so frustrated that he had track position over the man that he's been chasing for so long now, momentarily. But Jorg did really well to keep a cool head. And it worked very nicely for him indeed. 15 different nationalities in this field. We've got a Thai driver chasing a Swiss man down the hill. There's Dennis exiting now still and, and confidently defending from Oscar Tunjo. It's not like he's locking brakes and running on parts of the racetrack you wouldn't normally see him in. He is comfortably keeping the Colombian at bay. It's worth noting that perhaps we should have seen this coming. The lowest this feature race has ever been won from was Mitch Evans, who won it from fourth. It was a hope that things might get spiced up with the new machinery. But it does seem that the opening laps of a feature race here in Barcelona are oh so crucial. You can see those in the grandstands there beginning to put their hoods up. I can tell you, air temperature is 20 degrees, which isn't the warmest for this part of the world. But it's still not cold out there. It's not that windy out there. Is it beginning to drizzle? Could be very interesting indeed if it does for the moment. We're heading down the pit straight once again. Kevin York leading Alex Albon, leading Jake Dennis, Oscar Tunjo, and De Freeze pulling away from the Korean trio in ninth place and he is managing to get himself in the mix and here is the progress of Mr. Alex Palau the man who qualified so well last year and had a poor start really affected his confidence going into the other drives later in the season but he's trying to get past Sandy Stuvig at the moment this is only for 18th position but of course if it rains it could be for so much more and Palau will want to improve his position, and there behind him, uh, the staller you saw at the start, Jack Aitken, who had such an incredible 2015. He's managed to follow himself through. And the cloud looking ominous as it has since we started this race, as we go on board with Jack Aitken, the Arden driver, and that wonderful engine note. This is only for 20th place but he'll be learning with every lap he turns at the wheel of the Arden International car. And Palau is a terrific marker of his speed. So this is probably not going to be for points unless something dramatic happens with the weather, but a really interesting marker of these two who could easily challenge for the championship. And then you could say that about 15 drivers in this field. We're just going to have to watch and see what happens. At the moment, the man that many were betting and so we're on board with Palau, we've jumped one car in front, and can we jump in front of Sandy Stuvig up to 18th place, holding on to it through the final corner, up through the gears, so a little bit of oversteer that he got riding on the kerb. These new cars are much more sensitive in terms of ride, ride height setup, and he's getting closer, but he can't draw level. And so you'd expect Palau to be comfortably quicker than Stuvig, given what we've seen Previously in their GP3 careers, Palau a race winner in the final race of 2015. Stuvig, we know he's quick if he's comfortable in the machinery, but scored a best of seventh place last year 
in his debut season. Both of these are returning drivers. They have the rookie of Aitken hoping that they're going to collect each other and that he can test his raw pace in the race. Bit of tyre wear on the front of Aitken's car, but that's exactly what we'd expect at this time. Looking at the other cars in terms of tyre wear, it's not really that bad at all. Pirelli have gone arguably conservative. There are three compounds available to the teams this year, soft, medium and hard. They brought the hard to this race. They do not have to change it. They do not have to use another compound. Just this in a lights to flag race. As Palau, the closest battle on screen. Dennis and Tunjo still separated by half a second. And then the ART team communicating with their four drivers. A lot of work to be done on the pit wall this year. ART have seen Sergei Sorokin spin out of contention for the win. But they're looking very strong indeed here. This really does mirror what Esteban Ocon did one year ago. Didn't qualify at the front, got all the work done at the start. And that's exactly what Charles Leclerc has done. Although they're taking no chances. And looking to the heavens and hoping that they're not going to have to queue four cars in the pit lane. Because well, Leclerc would be fine. Fukuzumi would lose time. So we join the battle at turn seven. De Vries has managed to get himself up the road. And here are the Koreans. Parry really underneath the gearbox now of Essekan in front of him. You can see just coming off turn nine, though, he's not able to plant it like he would ideally want to. Gonda has had Holderon similarly all over the back of him for most of the race, but they're not able to make an impact. It's the field circulating once again through the first turn. You're going to see very <laughs> close between the two Korean cars. There's Essekan. There is Matt Parry, the former Autosport award winner. Very prestigious list of drivers who have claimed that award in the past, including David Coulthard and Jensen Button. Podium finisher last year, but stuck behind his teammate, and there's nothing more frustrating than that. As we see on board with Aiken. Getting closer and closer, but you can see he just can't inch in. Running at the rev limiter at the end of the straight, perhaps. By the way, it's not working at the moment. The weather not close enough. And it's all looking very good indeed if you're ART and Charles Leclerc. Aiken soaring away, trying to learn all he can. But the hope of points disappeared at the start. As here is the Haas development driver, or was, Santino Ferrucci, as we go back to fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, all in your picture. That's Jorg in fifth, Albon in sixth, Dennis in seventh, Tunjo in eighth, and De Vries, who's managed to join the party in ninth place. Dennis really will be ruining that time spent off the road when he lost a place to the man in front of him. Although, how much Albon will have damaged his tyres trying to pass York, we might get a clearer indication of in the final few laps of this motor race that looks to have been decided at the start. funneling through turn one once again a track that they know so well this track is not a surprise to any driver in the field today no matter where you are from if you come to Europe for the junior ladder you're going to be racing around the circuit to Catalonia and it's 16 turns across its 2.8 miles at some point of your career it's not overly popular apart with Alex Palau that might have something to do with it being in his home circuit 
Palau, of course, who qualified so well last year on debut in third, having a nightmare and technical gremlins affecting his qualifying. He might like this place, but he's not getting the results that we know he is capable of. The gap at the front now up to 3.3 seconds. Hughes will be ruining the start he had in the same way that we've seen Prima's hopes dashed of a first ever win on debut in GP2. It looks like Dams will have to wait a little longer despite their marvellous first qualifying session earlier today. You see Boshong has got very, very close to the back, as have most of the field now. Like I said, the gaps have not really changed since I listed them to you on lap three. There's still seven tenths of a second between Albon. There's half a second between Dennis and Tunjo. There's a second between Tunjo and De Vries, and it really has stayed that way for a large amount of time. De Vries has managed to move up. He's made good progress. Parry has got to the back of Essican. Parry with a creditable 12, although no points. And that is a surprise given the ability we know the Welshman has. That's exactly what Jake Dennis was saying. Good drivers are going to be out of the points. Such is the quality in this field. And a lock up there from Dennis. Now we're beginning, are we beginning to see him attack and try and get Albon? Or are we beginning to see him struggling for tyres? I think he's beginning to attack. He fancies getting himself up the order after spending so much of this race in seventh place. He has a sniff of sick. And Tunjo does not appear to be able to follow him at this stage. They've all been following each other for so long. They know where they're strong around the track. They know where their rivals are weakest around the track. Hughes is really... Ooh, Hughes has had a bit of a scrappy lap. We're looking at his teammate at the moment, Kevin York, Albon, Dennis, and now Tunjo, De Vries. You can see how close they are, but no one can get past anyone. So frustrating for them, so frustrating for us. And still, Foucault leads the train. Comfortable gap from York. Not worrying, really, for GP3. We have seen this before at the Circuit de Catalunya. It will be easier at other circuits. We saw real drama in Austria. That's where we're heading. But, of course, we've got a sprint race, which is definitely going to encourage all sorts of shenanigans tomorrow. We reverse the top eight. As you see a large amount of tyre debris coming away from the Karayan of Boshung there, who's really beginning to push on the penultimate lap of this race. And to the front then was Charles Leclerc, who took the lead in the first 300 meters of this race, and he has stayed there, comfortably pumping in the lap times. You can tell how comfortable a driver is by the amount of movement he is making on the steering wheel, and it all looks very calm and very composed, and it is going to be very competitive in terms of a finish for the Managas driver if he can complete the next 2.8 miles. He gets the pump from his mechanic, Interesting to him. Interesting that they were telling him the gap was slightly smaller than it is in reality. They were telling him it was 2.5. It's now five seconds. You see the gap there. Hughes still going to get a podium on debut, which is not to be scoffed at at all. A super result, which puts Hughes, who rather interestingly didn't start karting until he was 16. That's really unusual. There are drivers in this field, Nick De Vries springs to mind, who started karting when he was four. Some people just have the natural talent, and here is the man who will be climbing onto the podium as well if he can complete the last lap, Naira Fukuzumi. But we're back with the leader, enjoying the final half lap with him. So composed, third 
to first. Beautifully done at the start. And really, that has been the entire story of his race. Manage the tyres. Manage the brakes. Learn a little bit more with the car. And he's just a few corners away from taking victory. ART with a team to beat last year. They look ominously quick this year, exiting the final corner for the final time. Charles Leclerc takes the chequered flag and wins in Spain. He dominates the first race of the year to win by six seconds from Jake Hughes, who puts Dams on the podium in their first race in GP3. And ART have another podium finisher, a debut podium finish for Naira Fukuzumi. Antonio Fuoco displaying exactly the sort of consistency. Tried him with once seen fourth, then it was Jorg in fifth, sixth was Alban, seventh was Dennis. Tunjo couldn't do anything about the Brit in front of him in eighth, then De Vries, and our final point scorer is Ralph Boschong. But that really was dominant and impressive and a little bit easy for Charles Leclerc. Read an article yesterday that said, can anyone stop him? Well, not today, they couldn't. Not today. As Hughes driving past the man that drove past him at the start. Difficult cars to get off the line. We always hear that about GP2 and GP3. No different with this one. 400 brake horsepower. Got to get the revs in the right place. Hughes will go back and analyze what happened as the marshals applaud a drive that really never looked like going wrong from the first turn. Thumbs up around the racetrack. Like I said, he won four races. His form did tail off at the end of last year in European Formula 3. That was blamed on a chassis issue, but got to be one of the best weeks of his life so far. 18 years of age, he's done a Ferrari test in Formula 1, and he's driving for ART, heading to the top step. Fukuzumi, a terrific result. For him, part of the Honda Young Driver program. That's certainly going to put the hurry up on the elder driver, Nobuhara Matsushita, also part of the Honda Driver Young Driver program. And the drivers, as ever, on the lap into the pits, picking up a little bit of extra weight by running offline, picking up the marbles from the GP2 race and this race, although the tyres did not behave at all like they did last year, where we saw the order completely change. Remember, this race back in 2014 would have only been half an hour long. They extended it in order to see more tyre degradation. We didn't see any today. We did not see a jot of it. Have to go and ask afterwards whether anyone was struggling, but those tyres don't exactly look in bad nick, do they? They have picked up extra debris. That's the mess that you can see on the surface. And there is your top three in the first race of 2016. So just missing out on the points, we had Essekan in 11th and Parry in 12th. Gonda, who was quick in, in practice. And it's all about our winner, who in under 40 minutes has comfortably beaten all of his rivals. He takes the embrace of his mechanics and the congratulations. ART, so used to winning, of course. Terrific to see them still getting pumped up, not treating it as routine. And lovely to see the Ferrari development team down there to congratulate him. The reason that we have such a talented field in GP3 is that this is right in front of the team bosses. And as we saw Ferrari saying congratulations to their boy, we see Honda saying congratulations to theirs. And a, a handshake between teammates. Great for Fukuzumi to deliver on the promise of testing. Always difficult when you've spent the majority of your career in 
Asia, which is exactly what he's done, competing in Japanese Formula 4 in 2014 as he poses for a photo. And Japanese Formula 3 with two wins and fourth place last year. So the Pirelli tyres, always very, very difficult to learn. And he still has to learn the procedure of where to go. There's Jake Hughes. And Nairei Fukuzumi. The last in. And I think Jake Hughes just summed that up, really. Well done, mate. Good start, and it really was as simple as that for the Monogas driver, who got the fastest lap as well to claim the two extra points. So that superb stuff for him. Hughes with 22 points, of course, with the four for pole position that he scored earlier today. Let's listen in on these guys. So now you know. No, but okay. They will, uh, I will help you. Don't tell him anything about it. I thought it might rain in the middle. It was raining at one point. It was first on that. It's interesting to hear there from the drivers that it was raining at a certain part of the racetrack. Only lightly, though, not enough to force them onto wet tyres, which we saw in the race ART had prepared. I wonder if we'll, it would be very interesting to see what will happen if we get a wet race and four cars have to queue up. It's time to get the podium underway. Nare Fukuzumi in third place. In second place, from Great Britain, Jake Hughes. Jake Hughes started on pole, but he doesn't appear disappointed with second one bit. And living up to his billing as the championship favourite, Charles Leclerc, climbing to the top step, and we'll hear the Monagas national anthem. The Monagas National Anthem for your winner, Charles Leclerc. Absolutely superb stuff. He was confident. And he lifts the winner's trophy. A wonderful first time podium for GP3. And one for the mantelpiece for Naira Fukuzumi. Must be such a relief to transition into European racing. And not only do that, but like to, get to transition program. right to the top of the order in third. Another one for the album. And now, let the Great to see Ferrari begin. top brass applauding Charles' victory. And the 18-year-old is spraying the champagne at the end of 40 minutes. Relatively easy driving to the top step of the podium. So there we go, unsure of what to do. Time to pick up the trophies. 
more photos being taken by his team below. Amazing, it, it looked like they didn't really know what to do. Let's confirm the order at the end of 22 laps of the Circuit de Catalunya, the first race of the year. Charles Leclerc taking victory ahead of Jake Hughes and Nare Fukuzumi completing the podium. Antonio Fuoco and Kevin Jorg in fifth place. Albon was close but couldn't do anything about it. Dennis was having to repel Tunjo for the majority of the racing laps. Then we had to freeze. Boshong completing the points. Then Essekan and Parry will be very frustrated. Down there in 12th, Gonda, not a bad start to the season for him, but no points in 13th. Then Tatiana Coldron was 14th. Santino Ferrucci will wonder what would have happened if he'd sorted qualifying out only 15th for Dams. And then we had Janos, Tereshenko, Stuvig, Paolo, uh, Palau, sorry, Jack Aitken, Nandi, uh, Lacey, who started in the pit lane and finished a minute behind Raghunathan and Stein Stotthorst. So it wasn't the race we were hoping for, but we get a chance to do it all over again tomorrow. Join us bright and early for the sprint race when GP3 returns.